Hey everyone, and uh, welcome back. This is Chris, and we are going to uh, dive right into creating our Tetramino class um, for our Tetris clone tutorial. And uh, let's go ahead and launch uh, that. Double clicking it, it's going to launch Mono Develop. And um, the uh, the first thing we're going to do uh, before we do anything else is uh, we are going to go ahead and create a um, a method that is going to check. The, uh, the user input so that we can uh, move our te tetramino pieces around okay and uh, before we fill that in let's go ahead and put a call to that in our update method okay and um, what are what are the keys that uh, we're going to want to use for uh, manipulating the uh, tetramino um, so in this case I think what we should do is uh, we should use the, the left arrow the right arrow the up arrow to do a rotation and the down arrow to uh, move the piece down. So um, the way to do this very simply is to use the uh, input class and um, with along with the uh, the get key down method. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with an if statement and um, use input the get key down. And uh, the first key, let's go ahead and check the uh, the right arrow. Okay. And um, I'm not going to fill these out just yet. We're just going to go ahead and create them all. Um, and we're going to do else if um, and check input get key down. Key code that left arrow. Oh, forgot closing parentheses up here. All right. And else if input key down, key code, up arrow, and finally also input, get key down, key code, down arrow. Alright, so these uh, these if conditions are uh, going to test to uh, see what key the uh, user is actually pressing when they're playing the game. Um, so what we need to do now is uh, we need to actually add code to these to tell them what to do. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and fill these out. Um, and very simply, to begin with, um, if we press the right arrow, we want the uh, Tetramino to move right. If we press the left arrow, we want it to go left. The up arrow is going to rotate. And the down arrow, of course, is going to um, move the piece down. And uh, the way we do this, since this script is going to be attached to the uh, Tetramino itself, um, we'll be able to use the transform of that uh, Tetramino uh, prefab. And we'll be able to set its position. And we're going to just increment its position by a new vector three, and we're going to move it in the x position by one unit. Okay. So for the uh, for moving the piece to the left, we're going to do the same thing: transform position plus equals new vector three, and this time we're going to pass it a negative one instead of a one. Move it to the left. Okay. Let's skip over the up arrow part. Down, transform, up position, plus equals new, vector three. And uh, this time we're going to leave zero in the x and we're going to do negative one in the down, in the y uh, coordinate, okay? Um, okay, so at this point we actually could um, control the, uh, the tetramino and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Um, we've already added the class to our tetramino, so um, to do this, uh, since our tetraminos don't really do anything, they don't fall, they're not being uh, instantiated uh, on the scene yet, so um, just to kind of show you guys what's going on, uh, we can go ahead and just drag one of these prefabs into the scene, and uh, let's position it on a unit, there, okay, so when we hit play, that's way too big. <laughs> so we didn't adjust our camera. Um, so let's do that now. <laughs> I just 
want to make sure that we can see the whole grid. I think we go to 10.5 on the orthographic size. Should do it. There. Okay, so set my equal to 10. And let's go with 4.5 on the X. Looks about right. All right, so let's click play. All right, so here's our piece. And if we move left and right, let's see, we can control this. Um, up doesn't do anything because we haven't implemented rotation yet. Um, down, moves the piece down. Okay. All right, so let's jump back to our script and add some more cool stuff. So let's add in a bit of the rotation stuff here. Okay, so the add rotation, um, it's really simple. We uh, apply the rotation to the transform and we uh, use a method um, named rotate, easy enough. Um, and uh, to rotate our tetramino, we are actually going to need to pass in Euler angles. Um, and the rotation is going to happen along the z-axis, so the uh, X and Y values are just going to be zero, and the Z value is just going to be 90, because every rotation we're going to rotate 90 degrees, okay? So let's save that, jump back over to Unity, and click on play. All right, so now we can move right, left, down, and we can rotate, okay? All right, so controls seem to be okay, but uh, now we actually need to work on um, the piece is, is not falling by itself, uh, so it's, it's actually not moving like it should. So we have to add um, a couple of things to make that happen. So to do this, uh, we're going to need to create some variables, um, mainly because we're going to need to know um, how fast we want our piece to fall and um, what our current, uh, because we're going to have a timer that's going to count if we've reached our current um, value for our fall rate. So what we need to do is we need to actually create two variables. Uh, one we're gonna name just uh, fall, which is going to actually be the, uh, the timer. And uh, the other one, it's going to be a public variable so that we can access this in the inspector and change it like as we need to set that to one. That's going to make it move at one unit per second, which I believe is the default speed for when you're first starting on the, the first level here. So <clears throat> now that we've got our uh, variables created, the fall and fall speed variables, um, we're going to need to use these to uh, actually make our uh, tetramino move down um, basically by one unit. And uh, the way to do this is we could create a new um, if statement that checks the uh, the fall timer against the fall speed, um, but we could already uh, we could also utilize um, this if statement here that we're using for the down arrow since it already moves the piece down by one. So um, all we're going to do here is uh, we're going to use the uh, the or to uh, add another condition into our if statement, and um, there's a, a very helpful method uh, on, in the time class called time, which uh, basically gets the time since the game has started, okay? So what we can do here is uh, we can use time.time, .time, okay? And we're going to subtract the fall timer from that, okay? So at the very beginning, the fall timer equals zero. So time.time, .time, if it's been five seconds since the, uh, since the game started, or let's just say it's been one second since the game started, okay? It's been one second since the game started. Our fall timer equals zero, okay? So one minus zero is zero, and we're gonna check and see if that's greater than or equal to our fall speed, okay? And if time.time .time equals one and fall equals zero, one minus zero is zero, which is greater than or equal to fall speed, okay? So then what's gonna happen is, oh, okay, well, the, the player didn't press down, but this is true, so we're gonna go ahead and execute this line of code. And this is actually going to move the piece down by one. So the final thing that we're going to have to do here so that we 
if this is actually going to happen again in another second from now, is to update our fall timer with the current time.time. .time. So that now our fall timer is equal to one. So then the next time the time.time .time equals two and it's subtracting the current fall value, which is one set from our last time the piece moved down, it is then going to be greater than or equal to fall speed once again and the piece will just fall once more. So let's go ahead and check and see how that works. With our piece here, this should actually start falling one second after we start the game. And there it is, falling just like it should. And we can totally go outside of the grid, which is cool because uh, we haven't set any boundaries yet, but uh, it's all working as expected for now. So let's go ahead and um, let's end it here. And then I'm gonna start another, uh, another video for the next part of the script, um, just to give you guys uh, sort of a break, not to kind of clump it all together. So until then, I'll see you guys soon.